Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Dorado. Welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. Undefeated Kansas State rolled into town this past weekend as the Cowboys played host to the seventh-ranked Wildcats on homecoming in Stillwater. Speaking of homecoming, it was the final one to be held in this millennium. And as usual, it was tradition rich. Tony Lindsay and Adam Edwards will join us this week on our Get to Know the Cowboys segment. You'll want to hear what they have to say. All this and more is right around the corner, so you stay with us. We're back after this opening timeout. The Bob Simmons Show. Well, welcome back to the show. Bob, as I left Lewis Field Saturday, a couple of things came to mind. Number one, Kansas State's a darn good football team. And number two, win or lose, you better be ready to play the next week because anything can happen. Uh, that's right, Tom. Uh, but obviously at, uh, at Lewis Field, Kansas State did play well. Uh, I thought for the most part <clears throat> our, the team was ready to play. I thought we came out uh, uh, that first quarter and, and really jumped on and played well. Offensive and defensive executed, and I, and I really like the crowd. You talk about homecoming, uh, and the fact that this was a sold-out ball game, and a lot of orange in the stands. The first time we played Kansas State, that one side was full of purple. That wasn't the case this time, and uh, our kids were excited to play this ball game. As you can see, we came out. Uh, Jay Fox does a nice job of bringing this ball back to about the 43-yard line. Gave us great field position to start off with this drive with uh, Tom, and uh, we go in and we throw a, a nice, Tony throws a nice out to uh, Terrence Richardson, get about four or five yards, come out, run an option to Nathan. Uh, he picks up about five or six. Uh, it's third and four right now. <clears throat> come out with a series, we fake a reverse. Now, it's not there. And so Tony does a nice job of scrambling for the first down. Jake <clears throat> took our camera and out of it for a while, but I promise you Tony had it. He had the ball, come back and run it inside. Uh, 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 hand off to Nathan for about seven yards, come back. Nice throw to Ethan uh, with the other Howell for the first down. Then we come out back with uh, one of our reverse plays and Terrence Richardson does a nice job. But uh, Adam Davis does a real key block in knocking that guy down and go back with first down, get a pass interference call right off the bat. <clears throat> and as you can see, we're taking this ball down the field. Tony does a nice job on the option, picking up five. We come back with another uh, inside play to Nathan. Now, I thought he was in the end zone for a touchdown, yeah. uh, but we come back with a quarterback sneak, uh, and you're talking about a team that comes out with a first play drive. I think it was an eight or nine play first play drive right down for a touchdown, and that's how really we really want to start the ball game. And everything worked together for the second straight outing. Cowboys scored their first possession and really grabbed the momentum early. We did. Uh, defense comes out, you know, they're running with, this, with their big fullback, but we get him in a, a third down situation. And, and see here, uh, we talked about this as defensive staff, we have to keep contained. Mm -hmm. and one thing that we, when you bring pressure uh, and we, we didn't do it and he, get, and he got off the ball and then, then we got off a, uh, he got off a kick, uh, which he probably should have blocked in time, but we, we got a, a five yard run into the kicker. Still our ball, first down. Now we start on about seven yard line. Tony makes a nice throw to, to a Blackwood to, to really get us out of the hole. Mm -hmm. We're back up the 40 yard line, but this is a good read on his part because <clears throat> we're looking for matchups. Nice soft throw, good catch by Blackwood. Uh, we got the matchup that we're looking for him on a linebacker. Come back with first down now, and uh, our, our wide receiver gets jammed, and you can see Tony pulls the ball down, makes a nice play, picks up about 15 yards. That was a questionable call. I thought he got hammered out he there. He did get hammered. Uh, but for the most part, we're, we're back uh, in rhythm. Come back out in the empty formation here, and <clears throat> uh, which was good for us. And we throw a, uh, a screen play to Jamal Five, and he picks up about eight or nine yards. Uh, and so the, the offense is in sync. We're moving. Come back in with an outside run. Uh, we pick up about seven yards here. Go back with an inside run. Uh, and Jay does a nice job of running this ball. Good blocking up front. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, our offensive line early in that ball game took control. A nice run by Jay down to about the five yard line here. We'll come back with an option play here. Uh, and Tony does a nice read uh, and just walks in the end zone. Talk, and, uh, talk about the matchups you refer to. Basically, you spread people out out of one formation and you got pretty well the matchups you desired. Well, we did. We were looking for uh, uh, linebackers on tight ends. Mm -hmm. We thought that we had the, the better matchup and our quarterback did a nice job of, of finding those matchups and early in the ball game and making key throws. Uh, and as you can see, we're, we're up now 14 to nothing. Our defense comes back out, does a nice job of, of containing this guy. I thought this. Why was uh, that not throwing it away? Well, I don't know because it was clearly a throwaway. It should have been a safety but the officials got the better judgment on that. And uh, this big fullback rambled for 118 yards, but 
You know, in order to tackle him, you got to tackle him early before he gets started. Just kind of like Cato uh, did just, right just like there. Just like Cato did right there. And, and uh, uh, but we, we had this defense contained. We forced him back into a uh, punting formation. Uh, for the most part, we didn't really get our punts off. Terrence is trying to make something happen here. Uh, gets what he can and then gets out of bounds. Uh, but we start right on the 30. Uh, we come out with a, with another quarterback uh, throwback to our quarterback off the sweep play. They cover that pretty good. Mm -hmm. We go back with an inside throw to Terrence for a first down or close to a first down. Uh, and we're really in sync. Change a quarter. Uh, come back out with a... Uh, a throw to, to Blackwood, nice read, to play that, that we put in off of an unbalanced formation. A nice throw and catch here, and, and uh, he cuddles the ball and gets what he can, but that's a big play uh, starting that, uh, uh, that second quarter here. <clears throat> you like the rhythm, did you not, for the first We're in three sync. Drives? Nice play call, and everything, is, everything is, is moving uh, great. Uh, come back out, and uh, again, this, this formation that we used last week, looking for matchups here. Uh, Tony does a nice job of throwing down to Howell for a touchdown, uh, Ethan Howell for a touchdown, and he read that the uh, corner bit on the out, went up top, and you can see uh, now we're up uh, 21. And that was an OG&E power play of the game. OG&E proud again to bring you the OG&E greatest cowboy fan search. Log on for your chance to win big at www.oge.com. OG&E power at the speed of life. Nice call, nice play, uh, and uh, that, that's kind of sequence that we really uh, tried to get going for the most part uh, during the course of that ball game. And you like the way things are going now, 21 to nothing, and we're barely into the second quarter. We're into the second quarter. Uh, and we've got a good lead here. Uh, our offense, uh, our defense is on the field now. They come back and make some plays, but our defense does a nice job of, uh, of really getting their option play stopped for mm -hmm. the most part. Uh, and then they come out, and, and here's where we really got to contain. When we, when we get pressure, uh, we have a busted coverage. Uh, this guy wasn't covered, but for the most part, had we pulled that guy up, that play would not have happened. And those are the kind of things on defense that we really uh, can't afford to happen. And, and as you we, can see right now, we come back out here in the uh, uh, at first play of that drive. We needed to move the ball, but we start off with a fumble. They get good field position. They come back out in two plays. Uh, and now it's 21-14, and we're still in the uh, second quarter. Uh, we had that game under control. Now they got great field position, but I think our defense twice now in a uh, row turns them away. Come up, turns away, and this is a, is a nice stop by I think that's Adam Edwards does a great job here. Comes back out and throws the out. Nice stop by Porter, uh, forced him into a field goal situation. They muffed it. Good stop, three and out. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's three and out. But, but we didn't get anything going on offense. We went three and out the first couple series, and we gave the ball back to them. Uh, and now they come back out and try to make a play and a nice tip. Our safeties in our corners do, do a good job. You see uh, Porter does a nice job of tipping it. Uh, Adam does a nice job of hustling to the ball. He tips it back to him, and that's another drive that we stop. And, and now, it's, see, it's really up to us offensively uh, to come out and try to get some things going. Uh, and uh, we, we didn't do that for the most part. Uh, now, what's, what's, this is at the end of the half. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, that's when it's about 40 seconds left or 32 seconds left. Uh, at, the, at, the, at best, you can't really give them a score. We did. It's 21-21. They tied the ball game up, and now we got to go in and talk about adjustments and come back out the second half and play. What was the mood in the dressing room? Well, I, the, the mood was one that, uh, you know, we, we had a big lead. Uh, we let it get away, but uh, most guys would say, hey, this is a nothing-nothing ball game. It's even. And let's come back out. Let's regain the momentum and take this ball game over. And for the most part, when we come out, you're going to see here in the third quarter, the fact is it's a defensive battle throughout, and neither team have an easy time getting untracked offensively. Well, it's going back and forth. Uh, we, uh, we come back out here in the second half, and uh, our defense is uh, uh, stopping them on certain plays. Offensively, we have not got back in the jail in terms of us moving the football. Uh, you see a player on our defense that does a nice job forcing him into a punting situation here. Uh, and we get decent field position. We get started off on the 15. Uh, we run the option play. This is one of our better plays in the second half. The pitch to Jay Fox. He, he takes it down to about the 35-yard uh, uh, the line, hits the guy, deliver a blow. Uh, and then this ball comes up short. Their defensive back makes a play on it. Uh, and again, that's typical of how we played the, a little bit of the second half. They come out and run a draw, and we needed to get something going. Mm -hmm. uh, you see the big fellas running the ball here, and uh, it takes more than one guy to really wrap him up, Tom. And uh, they come out and throw a slant. Uh, we 
<clears throat> we get them stopped here, they come out and run the option. Uh, and our defense is really trying to hold them to at least three points, uh, which they do. Uh, now it's 24-21 uh, uh, K-State, but it's, it's the third quarter. It's the latter part of the third quarter. Uh, and this game is still up for grabs. We can win it. Uh, we got just got to come out and execute. You see defensively, they come out and he, he actually out, fumbled huh? the ball. The ball went out of bounds here. Uh, they come back and, and uh, they, they run the big uh, tailback, fullback inside here. They come back and run him on a draw. Uh, he skirts out for, uh, I think, seven or eight yards. And as I said before, you really got to gang tackle him. Uh, and that's what we're doing. Uh, but they're starting over really in our territory. Uh, and they run an option here. Uh, and from an option assignment, uh, we didn't, did not carry out the responsibilities of that, that defense. Uh, nice block by, I think that's Kevin Williams. Mm -hmm. Does a nice job of coming through and, and blocking it uh, at that point in time. It's, it's really 30 to 21. The game is still up for grabs. Uh, again, we didn't uh, get anything really going that, that second half defensively. Uh, we had some mistakes. They played well, and, and consequently, time we ended up losing the ball game. After <clears throat> things settled down, got to be 21-21, the third quarter really turned into more of what we thought it would be like. Two fine defensive units really controlling things. Well, uh, it did, but at the, at the same time, uh, their offense uh, found ways to, to make plays, and that's the thing that, that I hope that we had continued to do based on what we did in the first half. And uh, you got to give them a little bit of credit, but also when, you, when, you, when I sit down and watch the film, there are probably some things that, that we, we probably could have gone to to really help a little bit more on both sides of the ball. Uh, but when you play a good team like that, you really got to take advantage every time you get the football. As I said at the tees, no time to mourn or celebrate. <laughs> you go right to the next game. I know, uh, and that's what we talked about at the end of the game. Uh, you know, you, you're going to play an A&M team, which played an OU team, which really did a good job of, of beating the A&M. But we have to leave Lewis Field now, and we got to go down to uh, College Station and get a win, uh, and we can. It's just a matter of now getting back on course and executing and playing. Well, we'll talk about Texas A&M a little bit later okay. in the show. <clears throat> you know, no matter how many times you take part in homecoming festivities here at Oklahoma State, you have to appreciate the tradition and all the hard work that goes into making this one of the best, if not the best, in the country. From the walk around to the pep rally to the overall OSU spirit, it's all there for everyone to enjoy. And just in case you were not able to make it to Stillwater this year, our own Colleen Cassidy will show you just what you missed. And as always, the two minute drill is brought to you by the American Residential Group. We're at University of Monroe on Friday night, homecoming weekend here at Oklahoma State University. And I'm told that means only one thing, walk around, which is supposed to be this huge deal. I've never seen it before, but I'm here to check it out. It's 6.30 and the people are pouring in already. Let's go see. This week, the ideas for house decorations began to come to life after months of preparation. We started probably about three and a half weeks ago. Uh, we got the main house deck up probably two weeks ago. This, so all the moving parts we did just this week, like in the past few days. She was up all night. She didn't sleep at all. What were you doing? I was doing this right here. I uh, didn't get, I, um, that's why I lost my voice. I haven't slept in two days. And I couldn't believe how much went into these house decorations. Not only time, but money. What a great show of support for OSU. Well, we moved back to Stillwater 10 years ago. So this is our 10th one. And uh, it's just, Americana at its very best. It's very reminiscent. It's just very exciting to to come back and see the best homecoming in the United States, really. Maybe we could do this. Yeah. One year when we get in these okay. things. Yeah. Every year is so much better. Aside from the decorations, there is food, food, and more food. I'm telling you, I even lived in Wisconsin, and I have never seen a Bratmobile like this Bratmobile. This just tops off the food for the night. People are still checking things out, but as 9 o'clock approaches, it's time to head toward Lewis Field and make some noise. Pep rally noise. <laughs> what?
Everyone kept telling me that this is the best homecoming in America, but finally I had to ask an authority. Tell me why is this the best homecoming in America? Because the students put so much energy into it. Last night we went around, some of them worked all night, but the key thing is they come together, they plan this. It's really all about leadership, and our students really develop their leadership at OSU. Then, right on cue with the smoke and the chant, out come the Cowboys. Bring your Bring noise, the noise makers. Makers. While others will celebrate early into the morning, Coach Simmons is taking the team to bed so they'll be ready to do what they do best in this last homecoming of the century. Reporting for the Bob Simmons Show in Stillwater, I'm Colleen Cassidy. Uh, you know, Tom, uh, uh, Homecoming here is a festive affair. It's a dying art all around uh, mm -hmm. the country, except here at Oklahoma State. And it's something that we look forward to. And uh, uh, it's something that our students do a great job of putting on. Heck of a crowd there at the pep rally. Wasn't great it? crowd uh, when we came in. Uh, I, I, I sensed that going into this ball game that we would get great support from our student body and fans, and we did. And we did, certainly. As promised in the tease, you're going to meet Tony Lindsay and Adam Edwards when we return to the Bob Simmons Show. This Get to Know the Cowboys segment is brought to you by Ron Rakes and the team at Home National Bank, 324 South Duck in Stillwater. Hi, I'm Tony Lindsay. And I'm Adam Edwards. Welcome back to the Bob Shinnis Show. <laughs> you know, well, uh, have to look at the roster. I didn't wait, think those were guys. Well, Tony, uh, how was it you tackling Joe Hall yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> And how was it passing against those guys? Right. <laughs> uh, great interception, Adam. I, you know. <laughs> they can't confuse us. We know who I they know, are. I know. Good to have both of you guys on the show. Uh, I guess we need to start off with the most obvious question. Get it out of the way. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling fine. You know, uh, I tested my knee out all throughout the week and played yesterday, and I feel good. Good. Uh, Adam, uh, you got any bumps and bruises? Uh, yeah. Uh, Joe Hall, he's a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you come out of a physical game, you know, you're going to have some bumps and bruises. But uh, I look forward to playing Texas M next week. Yeah, we do too. Hey, Tony, uh, tell me, uh, you, you know, when I was recruiting you, I just found out I was a member of your family uh, that played on the national championship with uh, Magic. Really? Uh, my uncle. Yeah. Uh, He's a friend of mine. I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> he never told you, huh? No, he didn't tell me. Uh, my auntie got married to uh, Ralph Simpson about six, seven years ago. And Small world. Uh, yeah. Small world. Uh, boy, yeah. that is. You remember the recruiting days, don't you? It gets uh, back in the old. You remember running into these coaches and wanting to recruit you and coming to Oklahoma State? What did you know about Oklahoma State back then? Uh, <clears throat> back then, you know, I, I, I've been raised in Oklahoma and I was born in Oklahoma, so I always knew of the legacy of Oklahoma State and I thought that it would be a great place to play. And I've always dreamed of coming here, you know. So when uh, Coach Simmons came to my home and offered me, you know, I jumped at the opportunity and I've uh, been here all five years. Talk about a great place to play. It was this weekend. Could, nobody else could have gotten in that stadium. It was jam-packed. What does that make you guys feel like? Uh, I mean, it makes us feel good, you know, knowing that we have all that crowd support and fan support out there cheering us on, uh, you know, all four quarters of the game. It makes us feel good. It helps us. It gives us a, bo a boost of confidence. So, I mean, it, it really helped out. Yourself, feel the same way? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, when we had the pep rally, I can feel the spirit, you know, and I saw all the mm -hmm. orange and everything. I knew that, you know, that uh, homecoming day would be uh, one, of, one of the greatest days that I've ever had in my career, and I feel like that it was, you know, and uh, I wouldn't take it back for anything. Well, that's good. You know, one of the things we've got to do uh, with that home crowd is take it on the road with us now. You know that, don't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If we can figure a way to do that, <laughs> I think we need to do that next week. Thanks for joining us, fellas, on your day off. We appreciate you being here. We're back to wrap it all up after this final timeout. This week's question from oakstate.com is presented by Southwestern Bell. If you have a question for Bob Simmons, log on to OSU's official athletic website at oakstate.com and participate in the Southwestern Bell Ask Coach Simmons contest. That's what Welcome back to the show. And uh, our question this week has <clears throat> a little intricate, but perhaps you can give a real simple answer to <laughs> medical redshirting. Well, what it is, uh, Tom, uh, to get a medical redshirt, uh, it's been told to me, you really have to wait 
until your career is over with, and then go ahead and apply for it. And then it's it's in the hands of, uh, I think, the conference and then the the, uh, the NC2A. Okay, quickly. Bottom line: College Station <clears throat> next week, Texas A&M. College Station is a great place to play. They're going to have a great crowd there. Uh, sell out. Uh, we need to get our fans on the road. Our team will look forward to playing that ball game, and uh, we got to go down there and play well. well. Good luck to you next week. We'll Thanks, see you tomorrow. Tom. Appreciate you being <clears throat> with us this week on the Bob Simmons Show. For Bob Simmons, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody. The Bob Simmons Show has been.